Welcome back to We Are Live. I'm Travis Terrell. And then it's now time for the Blackening Hour. That's right. I've terminated Chris Denman, sent him on his way, sent him packing. And so I'm here to uh, guide you for our final hour of We Are Live. I'm Chris Denman. Look at me. So did I tell you about this new Rogan thing I watched the other day? It was Rogan, and he was like, oh, you know, science and weed and weed and science, and then boom, Trump president. Is that good? A good Denman impersonation? Pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Gardner, hello. Where are you? I'm right here. Hey! Hey, I kind of like this seat. Yeah? This is kind of nice and cozy. Is it warm? It is very fat ass. That is mm -hmm. a damn chair. Thick. Thick. Chris will be joining us back here in a second. He had to take an important sales phone call for We Are Live. Yeah. In the middle of the show. In the middle of the damn show. I mean, it's the content that people are paying for. Mm, get his ass, Gardner. Get his ass. But sure, let's just ignore it. <laughs> Well, he made a terrible mistake because this will be the Rachel Maddow hour where we go no, take a don't. deep dive. I can't watch her. <laughs> I don't watch her. I don't watch any of it. I don't watch. I don't. I honestly like yesterday we had it on, of course, here in the office. We didn't have it on MSNBC. We had it on CNN. But I don't. I can't. And this my and the only reason is, is it's one, it's preaching to the choir for me. Um, but two, um, like Rachel Maddow gets me too excited about the prospects of impeaching i can't watch her because she blinks too much you told me this that is so weird live with i don't how do you know that how do you know that's a thing i don't know it stuck out to me it's just something i had noticed about her i noticed things like that that's about so people. weird but how do you like when did you pick up on that several years ago that's so weird so I just, have you noticed anybody else on television that does something similar nothing that has like like grab my attention See, like now, that. now I'm going to have to go watch a show of hers tonight because yeah, I've never struggle. picked up on that. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I haven't, I don't have MSNBC or anything like that too, either. I have CNN, but I have hardly ever have watched that. I don't think, yeah, I think. I like maybe when hurricane coverage is going on. I like watching storm coverage. Is there anything though like you, that, that any of those networks can cover that can get you to watch it wall to wall? Mm. Look, I'm going to say this. Okay. It's not racist as hell. Okay. This is not against. Oh boy. You know, the I'm LGBTQ. I'm about to say, do I need to get at all? Which community do but I, I need to alert on? Twitter? I think like Don Lemon is terrible. Like I can't watch anything with him. I can understand that. I cannot watch. I like I said. I don't. I think the most of CNN that I will say I've watched, say like an hour plus. I think I only watch maybe Wolf Blitzer because Wolf. Uh, it's always funny to me. See? Wolf is a kind of, but here's why my thing with Wolf Blitzer is that I feel like the executives at CNN are like, man, just run him out there. Just let him do his thing. Like, we don't want to, yeah. like, sometimes I wonder, I, I feel like Wolf Blitzer is the kind of person when they turn the cameras off, he's still in full anchor mode. I feel like that's him. I feel like he's the, he's our generation's version of Ron Burgundy. Okay. Like he's harmless. He'll give you the news. He, he's a guy that just looks the part. He looks the part. That's why I think Wolf Blitzer is He made his bones in some war coverage. Yes, he did. And a lot of those, a lot of those anchors did. You yeah. know, Christian Amanpour. Like, there are a ton of, like, and when you go through the early stages of CNN, you're kind of, like, grandfathered in as Wolf a Blitzer, stoic I have, anchor. I have an issue there because I see him, and all I can think of is Katrina when he said, um... They're showing B-roll footage of people wading through water, and he goes, "Look at these people. They are so poor, and so black." And I was, oh, I do remember. I was that. watching that by myself at home. I do home. remember that. And no one was there, and I was so pissed off because no one was there to see that. Because I'm like looking around, I'm like, "Did he? <laughs> what did he? I called a friend immediately. Am I'm like, "Hey, did you just see what?" And someone was like, "Yeah, I saw it too." too. Like, oh my god! Oh my god! It was just like, holy shit. It's still my favorite Wolf Blitzer moment is when he's interviewing Dick Cheney and they get around to talking about Cheney's uh, homosexual daughter. And you could just tell, like, the wheels in. Like, Wolf, like, Dick Cheney is, was Darth Vader. And so he was inside the Death Star interviewing what many consider one of the most <laughs> evil human beings in the history of this country. Oh. And he is just, Whoa. he's like walking back the question while asking it i've never seen it done before like he's like we of oh, course I've done that have a ton of great respect for your gay daughter 
but you have a gay daughter. How does that make you feel? I don't want to intrude. I don't want to get personal, but we love your daughter, but you have a gay daughter. It was so hilarious. And Cheney, to his credit, is just staring daggers through Wolf yeah. Blitzer. There's nothing Wolf like, could do. Like Bill Belichick? Yeah, <laughs> yes. He was just a like, woman reporter. Ugh, don't even get me started. Um, I've walked back questions like that before. In the middle of asking? Yeah. Like to Mike Matheny. So, I think I've heard you say something Because similar. I knew I screwed up the question uh, as I asked it. Mm. I phrased it wrong. And I was thinking of something else and threw the wrong name in there. So I got like a little bit of a, it was, I'll kind of show the camera. It was like a kind of a, like, what, what do you, and I'm like in my head going, oh, oh shit, I, I screwed this up. I didn't start it. I tried second. walking it back and, and it point. didn't work. And so it was kind of a little, like Ben Fred still makes fun of me for it because like I finished the question trying to kind of walk it back, but make it make some sense. And, and then the, Mike was like. Well, I mean, we're not starting Elidimus Diaz at third base and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, but if you were. And so I kind of got. Oh, <laughs> so because you. you but, but if you put it in this in this context. Nah, he so, wasn't. He didn't like that. I didn't think he was. And he but, shouldn't have. It was bad. It was I, a bad question. It was me trying to save my ass at that point. I, 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 had, I had fucked up. And so I was trying to figure out how to not make this as awkward I, as it. It was going to be. I've always wondered that, like, even when they, when I see, like, the Trump press conference of any kind, I've always wondered, like, because you have to, like, as a journalist, when you're asking that question, obviously, it's on live national television, and you want to be as prepared as possible, yet you don't want to be the nerd looking down at the damn notes while trying to ask this very serious question to the it president. Like, like right, unless you're, like, looking for a direct quote. Right, to make exactly. Sure, say, hey, I want to make sure I get this. And, I've, quote. All, and I've always, like, I, I like the fear comes over me for those people because you're like, again, if it was any other president, whether it be, you know, George H.W., George W., Barack Obama, Bill Clinton. What a stupid question. You're going to get that. That's what you have to like because it's not that, not only because... Like the scrutiny now on reporters, especially people who recover this government, this president every day, is at its all time high. So you you know that your question has to be almost succinct. It has to be pre precise. And if it's not, like you have an individual on the other end who's answering it, that's just going to light your ass up. Not I wouldn't even say light your ass up because he's not a light your ass up person because he's not that smart, but he's the kind of person that will, if there's any room for him to have confidence in an answer, you're going to be known as the dumbass that opened that window. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine doing that on a daily basis. And then, of course, being in the White House press corps, I've, uh, that's, like, that's one of those jobs where I admire and I would never, ever want to do. Yeah. It's a job like I think would be, it's because you get, again, you're the day-to-day you know, the person who covers the most powerful person in the world. Uh, but there's so much that goes on in a given day, especially with this particular administration. Like, I don't know how one could actually keep up, especially in a media culture that wants everything now. And any word or any question or anything that you report that's slightly off will... People pick that apart as opposed yes. to the rest of what you've reported. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, so you're, you're really a tightrope without a net. How, and then apparently that creates uncertainty on the rest of, of everything else. That's uh, I understand why people do that because people buy into that. That's uh, I will put that on people in some way for actually like buying into something like that. Right. Like it's not that that like in, in Watergate they they screwed up. Woodward and Bernstein screwed up a big report about what was said in a grand jury. That something that wasn't said. Wow, like they, I didn't realize they, that. Yeah, they screwed it up. They got it wrong, and then people jumped on that. But then you look at the rest. Of everything. You see the rest. So, of like, it. does that one thing mean the rest of everything else isn't the truth? No, but you have to be able to actually put some effort in and think about it and look at what's going on to see that that's the case. Is there a job that you think would be that looks challenging and that it could be fun, but a job that you know damn well you couldn't necessarily do well. Like, I think I, I think I may have said it before. Like, I think press secretary, like, is a job I think would be fun. Uh, challenging. Let me say challenging. Yeah. But I know I could not do well. But I think just knowing that you would have to be the voice of an entire administration and you have to 
like you're going against a firing squ- squad every day. Like I think well, the challenge of that is well, I mean, not necessarily. Or we don't just even don't, do news conferences, or you don't do yeah. press conferences anymore, or briefings. But I think that is a, what as a job I've looked at. I go, that seems challenging. I would be terrible at it. Is there a job that for you? Uh, I can't think of one, just because I think so many jobs are out of my league. So, <laughs> so you don't think you could be like a manager of a baseball team, no. like a professional baseball team? No. Why would I think that? No. Like I think you could do. I think you no, could be a. That, I think anybody, people think it's just a decision on who pitches in the bull. Like that's not. There's so much more involved. Like you have to command respect immediately. Like no one I know, like in the media, could do that job. Very well at all because they wouldn't be respected as soon as they walked in the room. Do you, you think there is a media personality that could like be? Like Frank Cusimano walks into the manager. People are gonna laugh. Yeah. Bob Ramsey walks in there. Just because he has to have lineup gasms and make lineups, they're going to laugh. Ramsey so looks the, the part, though. Ramsey, yeah, I but could... they wouldn't respect him, and they wouldn't listen. Like, no one in the media would be able to do that. Excuse, sir, excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, now joining us, late as usual, boys and girls, Chris Blackfish Denman. Look Say like hello. The, look like the phone hawk. The phone hawk must have got you today. Hey, man. <laughs> You, you want a rant? You want a Denman rant? Oh, no. You want to yell at something? Want to be mad at something? Oh, oh. Give him a Denman. I want to hear a Denman rant. It's going to be 90 degrees today. It was 72 this morning. Why? Hey, make up your mind, Why? Paul. What's going on? What, what's going on? <laughs> Thank you. I like the, it's Something about that chair, ain't it? Something about that chair. It does it. Something like that. <laughs> Is there a job, Chris, that you see like would be incredibly challenging, but you know you couldn't do well? Because we were just talking about gigs that we were like, it looks like it would be. I could not be the conductor for an orchestra. But yes, you could. No. Like, do you, do they write the music? Do you keep time? Yeah, all it is like. Boom. Uh, 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 all right, do four three now. Uh, uh, four, do three four. Uh, 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 That's not three four. Uh, 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 oh, you don't know that. Chris didn't know do that. Do three quarters time. You're just skeeping and bopping and dooping. Why are you send bringing him in? Singing, send the runner. Send the runner. What's the run? Oh, that's a part of a conductor? <laughs> I think so. That's how it works. Is that, yeah, like a third base coach is like a conductor <laughs> of the base path. <laughs> Sounds like Costas. He's the maestro. <laughs> you woke up with Costas too much. <laughs> I'm thinking, maestro uh, of the base pad. The maestro of powder coating in the Midwest is Gateway Powder Coating. Gatewaypowdercoat.com. Check them out. Mm-hmm. They support us, Travis, and our talented show we do. <clears throat> Gatewaypowdercoat.com for more information. It's grilling season, people. Yeah, yeah. Make sure that furniture looks nice. Make sure those wheels look nice. Make sure everything looks nice. That's right. Gatewaypowdercoat.com for more information. Chris, the weekend is here. It's a pretty busy. The weekend. actor from the new Adam Sandler film. Yes. Yeah, get How me. quickly things change, by the way. Like the weekend was like the guy, right? What was it, a couple years ago? Uh, and then now, like, do you ever hear about the weekend or anything? Like, is he relevant still? The weekend? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's oh, incredible. Then, then I've Did he lost date touch. a Kardashian? Uh, no, no, he was dating one of the Hadid sisters. No, before Who's that, what? it was a Selena Gomez or something. Yeah, he dated Selena Gomez. Oh, Selena oh. Gomez. Selena Gomez, he did date. date What's uh, a Hadid sister? Uh, there's a uh, there's these twin models. Uh, they're very uh, pretty. Oh. Very pretty. Very I didn't realize that. Yeah, there is a Bella and another one, Hadid. But they're sisters and they're both models and they're very, very gorgeous. Are they twins? I don't know if they're s- twins. Okay. I don't think they're twins. Maybe I misspoke in that regard, but they are very, very You didn't hot. say that. I was just trying to figure Okay, but yeah, he, uh, I guess, yeah, when... When you look like The weekend and you sing like The weekend, I think you can probably get anything you want in the world. Since it's Friday, I have a question for you guys. Mm-hmm. Do you want to wrap the show a little earlier? I don't know. Hold on, man. Just because wanna... you in that seat don't mean you get to... No, I am in the captain's chair, oh, okay. and I or say you we two... go to the top. Do you two want to push forward? Because I have something I have to take care of. We're gonna push forward, man. Like I, I didn't, I didn't I like know we that. were. I didn't know the where all of a sudden. Like what? what? I don't know. I didn't realize we were your stepchildren that you were just gonna just simply leave us in the car while you I'm go to the casino. I'm trying to keep casino. the lights on. Man, I'm look, the lights are the on lights right on. now. Well, they gonna turn us off in the middle of the show? They can't do that. That's against the law. Uh, that's not a law. That's an ordinance. You can't Gardner, turn off. You can't cut off. Trust me, you don't know the law. Thank, thank you, Gardner. I'm talking to you, Travis. Oh, sorry. <laughs> My bad. 
Let's make fun of one Trump tweet and call it a day. Okay. All right, fine. What do you got? Okay. Number one, uh, I have a new little image thing that we're going to use from now on. So, cancelment inquiry. <laughs> He's canceled. Okay, this was from this morning. What do we and got? it's been getting some play. All I right. saw it. And uh, here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. What do we got? To show you how dishonest the lamestream media is, I used the word little, not little, in describing corporate dis, dis- cor- corrupt congressman little Adam Schiff. Low rating CNN purposely took the hyphen out and said I spelled the word little wrong. I small a small but never ending situation with CNN. All right. Did so, he? What did he say? He spelled little wrong. Did well, he? what does little mean? Like, like you know, he's trying to do like you know, with little, oh, little, like if we were okay. doing. He should have used a W. Is what he should have done. Yeah, he should have like little. little. Adam sure. uh, but he spelled describing wrong. But notice the apostrophe. Yes. That he says he used. Right. But he described it as a uh, <clears throat> hyphen. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Here's 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 what I don't. There's a lot. Here's what I I like, and here's how I know there are either two Americas and uh, no way in hell, no way in hell any other elected official or previous president gets away with that. No way, no way, no way. Hillary, imagine President Hillary Clinton not knowing the difference between an apostrophe and a hyphen. I do love the Daily Show when they do the Obama. Uh, controversies and they make them sound <laughs> ominous because I <laughs> like saw the one the other day they did the selfie stick and then they show all the news coverage the ch- around it where it's just it, it's brilliant <laughs> they did one with the coffee <laughs> they did one with the coffee like the, the, uh, the, the what, they, what do they call it the cappuccino salute yeah. when he was getting on marine <laughs> one and he had the coffee in his hand he was saluting the marine that stand by the helicopter <laughs> and like Fox News made three days out of that like and yeah Daily Show literally broke it down like in documentary form of how tragic and and yeah, so but then you know what? All, but the funny thing is, all of it, can you imagine Reagan doing this? And then they show Reagan like on stage going. <laughs> <laughs> here's my thing: is like here's the thing with him and Giuliani. Like you know they want to be goombas, and that's cool. That's fine. They grew up in New York, so I can understand why they would want to be attracted to that culture. But like, <laughs> they talk so much. Mm-hmm. Like they are the worst want to be gangsters ever. Like. Nobody tweets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Giuliani was so pissed. On the, we should they're do so. F- I will say this: they are entertaining. I, I know, obviously, democracy is going to hell, and the earth is melting, and we'll all be living in caves in ten years. However, with this, the aliens it, that are already there, if we're lucky. But I feel like this has been quality entertainment. Donald Trump oh, does know a moment. He does know a moment. Yeah, See, I said this, and you said I was a problematic. Well, you are. Well, it goes without saying. I think it's kind of. Kind of boring. Yeah. All right. Um, Guys, check out midcoast.media for more. Hold on, man. I got some more drops. I want to thank the folks at Tech Electronics for providing us with this amazing studio. More thank drops. them so much for oh, these, these beautiful shout outs? lights. Yeah, we're doing, doing now. It is shout out Friday, so don't forget for us to do this. Saturday, also, who you've seen you. at the World Series of Comedy. At the World Series of Comedy, I'm going to check out my good friend, Larry Green. Make sure you guys vote for him and also Nathan Norton. You can check him out as well. Um, so make sure you guys go out and support that. Uh, also, this weekend, uh, Travis will be at the 5K run this Sunday downtown hosting with the University of Mizzou alumni run. University so of Mizzou? University of Mizzou. That's how I roll now. If you see me about, wave, take a picture. UMC. Let's do some, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. There it works. Also, I want to thank uh, Buzz Hawaiian Grill. If you're out in the area today, make sure you go say hello to Buzz. Enjoy yourself He's downtown some, today. He is downtown today. Enjoy yourself some poke, my friends. Mm-hmm. Also... Uh, Tech Electronics, we already said that right? Yeah. Getaway Golf Carts. Mm-hmm. Uh, boys and girls, we're going to be doing a video with them here shortly. It's going to be part of our Traview coming soon. Getaway Golf Carts. If you're trying to escape from the law, make sure you contact <laughs> www.getawaycarts.com. <laughs> uh, hashtag carte blanche. Um, also, want to thank, of course, our amazing sponsors from last night's Happiest Hour, uh, oh. Jack Daniels and Schlafly. Uh-huh. Without their support, we would not have been able to put on a great show like we did last night. Libby Higgins killed it! Uh-huh. She killed it! She was absolutely amazing. So thank you to those great sponsors okay. and the good folks down at Sophie's. Also, want to give a shout-out to oh. my Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus! Uh-huh. Can I give a shout-out? Yes, please. I'm going to give a shout-out. Who's your shout-out today? To Keith Morrison. Yes. And Dateline. 
The pod coming to the loo? Well, he's got the podcast going. The, the thing, thing about, about Pam. But not only that. Tonight is the debut, the premiere of the 28th season of Dateline. Really? And they're starting with... Uh-oh. The Pam Hupp story. Nice! Tonight on Dateline. St. Louis! What a year for St. <laughs> Louis, man. The Blues, the Cardinals heading to the playoffs, and Pam Hupp are back on national television. One of my dream team members literally ran into him at her office. He was in town several Pam years Hupp? ago. No. Oh. Ran into Keith Morrison. Like, God, she met Keith alive? Morrison. That's dope. She turned around. He's in their office because uh, she worked in the office with Joel Schwartz, who was re representing Russ Faria from this story. And they were going to do a sit-down interview. She turned around in the hall, and she bumped into somebody, and she goes, oh, sorry. And she looks up, and it's Keith Morrison. And he's, apparently he just goes, hi, I'm Keith Morrison. That is so awesome. And I'm like, what? He said it like that? She's like, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm like, God damn it, I want him. <laughs> so shout out to Keith and Dateline. Good luck. Chris, are you I'll be your, watching. Who's your shout out to today? Nathan Orton, World Series of Comedy. Saturday <laughs> <night>. <laughs> uh, on behalf of Katosis, I am Capri Sun and Pizza Roll. This has uh -huh. been We Are Live. Boys and girls, make sure you catch the wall recap sometime today or later this weekend. It's been fun. A great, great week. Super, super job, everybody. And we'll see you next time. Chris? Peace. Ha, ha, ha.